Hey there, this is Mindy Lighthype, and today I want to talk about kneaded erasers. I have to say that of all of the tools that are out there, one of the most effective, simplest, and best tool that you could put in your toolkit as an artist, especially when you're working in graphite, is the kneaded eraser. Here I have some examples, uh, and I wanted to just sort of talk about how to take care of your eraser and the best way to use it, and some tips. So let's get started. Here we have, this is made by Prismacolor, and they come in, I think Design makes them, and there are others. Sometimes they come in different colors or whatnot. They also be, can be called rubber putties, depending on what country you're in. But here in the United States, they are called, you know, kneaded rubber, or what I call them is kneaded erasers. So when you get a package like this, it comes in cellophane, and you're going to open it up. And one of the mistakes that I see people do quite often is that they just open it up and they just start using it like this as if it were a regular plastic eraser or a pink eraser. And they don't do anything with it and they can't figure out why it doesn't work. The most important thing that you could ever do for your kneaded eraser is knead it. And I think that that comes from like making, you know, making bread, you knead the dough. So this just came out of the package and you can see it has wonderful elasticity to it. It pulls apart beautifully and the color is a very light, very pale gray. The more and more I knead it, the softer it becomes. So I'm just pulling it apart, folding it back on to itself, and what ends up is it becomes very pliable. You can squeeze it in your hand, you can make it into different positions. So this is brand new, and if you have one that you've purchased, this is what it should do when it comes straight out of the package. It should be a little bit difficult to pull apart, but when it does pull apart, you want to make sure that it has this elasticity to it. So here is a kneaded eraser that I hope you will never have in your toolbox. This is a very neglected and bad kneaded eraser. It probably will never be able to be worked with. And this is where um, the way that this happens is that the artist does not need it. They just keep using it and try to erase from it, and graphite has built up on the outside or the exterior of the kneaded eraser, and it's just not working. When you try to knead it, what ends up happening is, wow, it pulls apart. I had to really pull that. That's where the noise I hit my hand. So what ends up happening is you pull it apart, and notice there's, there's, no, there's not that elasticity. The elasticity is gone because this kneaded eraser is basically spent. It is crusty and hard on the outside and it's actually making my hands dirty. So this is something that at this point you want to get rid of. You want to just discard it because it's never going to do anything for you except make a mess. It also has cat hair in it <laughs> so you want to um, maybe provide yourself with a small tin or something to put your kneaded erasers in. Maybe like an Altoid box or a little plastic container or something to put it in to keep it away. I have cats and uh, very often they will pick it up in their mouth and think that it's a toy and I find it under the couch with little chews uh, marks in it. So my suggestion is that you don't ever have an eraser that looks like this. When you do have an eraser that starts to get a lot of wear and tear in it, it can begin to look like this. If you notice, this is the first one that came out of the, the package that I just opened, and it is larger because it was actually a larger eraser to start with, but the color of it is very pale gray, where this one is a darker gray. So how do you know when your kneaded eraser is spent? Well, first of all, it's still working. So what's happening is that when I open it up and I start to knead it, it very nicely spreads apart and I still have that elasticity in the kneaded eraser so I can still mold it and it still is usable. If it gets to the point where it looks like this and it's very dark in color all the way through and it does not pull apart easily and keep the elastic properties of it, it means that it's time for you to get a new one. So this one is still very usable and uh, I can continue to use this. This little blue one here is not actually a kneaded eraser. This is something which is called Fun Tack, and I got this on Amazon and it comes in these strips and you, you purchase it to adhere things to the wall. 
So you can use this on paint and it will paint on your wall. You just kind of break off a piece and stick your artwork or your frames or whatever onto the wall without using nails. But you also can use it to lift up and use as a kneaded eraser. It takes less of the pigment off and we'll do a comparison so that you can see the difference. But this can be picked up at like a Home Depot or an Ace Hardware or somewhere where there's a hardware store and it's called Fun Tack and it's usually this blue color. It's also maybe called Blue Tack or Mounting Putty. One of the things that I see often that people do in their preliminary drawings is that they do a lot of sketching. So if I were going to be drawing a pair, I could come in and start to draw a line and go over the line. So what ends up happening is I don't have a clear and precise line. I have lots of little lines. And I tend to be a sketcher. I tend to not really like doing just one line. Now I've done this with an HB pencil and I've done it very lightly. But what's interesting is that it's too dark to begin with and there's too much messiness about it. So I'm going to switch and use a 2H pencil, which is a harder lead pencil, and I'm going to come in and go over my line, but rather than do this repetitive sketching, I'm just going to create one fine line that works as my outline. In order to get the curve the way I want it, I change the position of my paper so that my hand is comfortable and I'm going to turn again. I'm not pressing super hard but I am intentionally creating a single line and I'm not sketching. Now that I have the pair drawn I can come in with my kneaded eraser and I can actually use it and lift off all of the surrounding sketching drawing that I did. Now the drawing is nice and clean. It's ready to put tone on it. So basically what's happened is that the HB was done very soft and sketchy. The 2H was then put on top and then the kneaded eraser was used to lift. Now that I have graphite on the kneaded eraser, I'm going to come in and knead the kneaded eraser to redistribute any of the graphite particles to keep the kneaded eraser working properly. Another way that I really like to use the kneaded eraser is to lift up areas of tone that have gone too dark. So for instance, if I come in with the side of my pencil and I'm going to work in an area that I want to get dark, but let's say after I've laid this ground down, I've decided that, you know what, it's too dark. I wanted it to be lighter than this, but in order to cancel out some of the texture of the paper and fill in a lot of the hills and valleys, I had to go darker. Then what ends up happening is if I come in with my plastic eraser, and whenever you use a plastic eraser, you want to go over to the side and make sure that it's clean. So I usually erase over on a scrap to make sure that the plastic eraser is clean. So if I come in here and I try to lighten up the area, it kind of smears and I really only go back to the white of the paper. I'm not lifting anything up and now that I've gone with my hand across I've actually made a mess. So I've got all these little particles and I've got um, a smear. So one of the things that the kneaded eraser is really good for is cleaning up around the areas. And again, knead your kneaded eraser. But this is really not what I was looking for. I wasn't looking for it to go back to the white of the paper. And I also don't like the fact that I have these harsh lines here. So I'm going to try to come in and fill this back in with my pencil. And I want it to be uniform, as uniform as I can get it. So by going in opposite directions, it can cancel out. I can still see it, but it's, it's pretty camouflaged from the way that it was before. But now I want to come in and I want to lift up this whole area. If I use the kneaded eraser just as I have it now, it's got all these folds and wrinkles in it and that's actually going to show. So I don't want that. So I'm going to go with a little bit of the bigger one, which is the brand new one. And I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to pull it out and start to flatten it. And I'm going to come in on the paper and use my the palm of my hand to flatten it out so I'm making like a pancake and I want it to go out over the whole entire surface if I can, if I can make it big enough. Now if I get it close to the camera here, you'll see that there are some bubbles and there are some folds. 
So even with pressing my hand, I can actually get some of the wrinkles from my palm into here. So I want to make sure that I smooth out, and by working on a smooth surface like this piece of paper, I should be able to, when I peel it up, start to get rid of that. If I haven't, I can come in with my thumb and push them down to try to minimize any wrinkles or folds or bubbles that I might find. And make sure you don't press your fingernail into the kneaded eraser because you'll just be making more work. So again, I'm gonna put it down and see if I can't get it as flat. If you work on a wooden table or something like that, you may pick up the green of the wood, so you wanna be mindful of that. And so now I pretty much have it as smooth as I think I'm gonna get it. Then I place this over the top and press down. This is very much like what we used to do as kids. We played with Silly Putty. And then when I go to lift up, all of that graphite came up. And it's interesting that the area where I filled in, there's still that track of where I used the regular eraser. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come in and I'm going to knead this kneaded eraser and redistribute any of the graphite that's inside so that it'll be nice and pliable and workable. So another thing that you can do with the kneaded eraser is if I found that this area here was bothering me, you can actually form the kneaded eraser in whatever way that you want. You can come in and create like a point and you can come in and very lightly, I'm working in tiny little circular motion to come in and get rid of that line. And there may be too much graphite there, it may not actually work, but if you're in a pinch and you've had some real difficulties where there was a mistake, this would be an option to come in and see if you couldn't work it out. So I'm tapping with this, and you can see just this little tiny bit on the kneaded eraser is what's picking up the graphite. And again, if there's too much graphite on that area, it's not gonna pick anything more up. So I'm gonna knead that back into the fold and rework it and come in and tap, 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 tap. And you can also come in and lift up areas more. So you could actually have something fade out by continually working with the kneaded eraser. So one of the things that I love about this is that you can change your mind. A lot of times when you're working on something, you can feel like, well, you know, I wish it was darker. And then when you made it darker, you said, oh, I wish I, it was lighter. And by working with the kneaded eraser, you have many options to manipulate and play with your graphite drawings. It's a wonderful tool and I encourage you to become acquainted with it and get to know it and work with it. So let's just add some more back onto the top here and I just want to show you the little blue guy here. So this also, this is the from the hardware store, this is much more pliable. It's kind of sticky also. You can come in and it does exactly the same thing. It's just, it sticks a little bit more to your fingers and I think that's because they want it to stick to the wall. You can come in and you can lift up. If there was something that you really wanted to get erased, you could come in and you could use your plastic eraser. And I always suggest that you push the crumbs off like this, or if you have a, a brush sweeping away from the area, it helps to eliminate the dust. So if I have an area where there's a sharper line, you can come in with either your kneaded eraser or your blue tack and you can pull and that will soften so that it fades away. So sometimes you're going to be looking for lost edges or you're going to be looking to make a highlight less harsh. So you can use this to soften that highlight area. So your kneaded eraser is really a wonderful tool that you can use in your artwork. And I encourage you to go ahead and try it, give it a try. And always remember to knead your kneaded eraser. Okay, this is Mindy Lighthype, Drawing the Beauty of Nature. I hope that this drawing tip has helped you in your journey, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.